Okay, let me get to some specifics and start with that area. That that has been the most pointed criticism towards you from from either media members or people on the right and left saying that because we're within six minutes, not six minutes, but six months of the election, that you should be answering specifically and that you're giving broad answers. Do you think that is a fair point that some of the critics have offered up? I, I don't think it's a fair point, and I'm glad you asked it, Chad, because I'm, I'm going to ask each of your listeners uh, if they do me a favor. Go to my website and look at the details that we have on issues, and then go to Senator Franken's website and come back and, and tell us who has more detail. I have more details. Although, wouldn't you say he his record also is how he's voted, right? Not just, well, he, not just well, the website. Well, he has voted, but, you know... Uh, Chad, when was the last time that Senator Franken held a press conference or did a town hall meeting in Minnesota? It's not happening. And so that's the story that the press isn't writing about. I'm out there every day campaigning. I'm out there every day talking about the issues. And uh, I'm talking about solutions to health care. Who's not talking about these solutions is Senator Franken. So let me ask you a couple questions here. GOP senatorial candidate Mike McFadden, nice enough to join us. In, in our state, minimum wage just went up to nine fifty. President Obama has talked about raising up to ten dollars. If you become the next senator, would you vote in favor of raising minimum wage up to ten dollars? I, I, Chad, it's it's a great question, and and I will support anything that produces jobs and generates jobs. And the minimum wage has been an important safeguard. I happen to believe uh, it's much, it, 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 it makes much more common sense to me that it's something that's decided locally as opposed to at the federal level. Uh, the, the idea that you have one wage that is applied across the whole country doesn't make sense to me. Did it make, that, that, did it make sense in Minnesota? To raise it to 950. Did it, did it make sense? I didn't have. I, I don't have access to to the reports from the economists in terms of what the uh, job. Uh, the, there's there's a relation between how high you raise the minimum wage and what happens to jobs. I'm concerned about people that want to climb the social ladder, and if we raise the wage too high. Uh, you, you act, you'll actually destroy jobs as opposed to create jobs. And if that wasn't the case, you'd just turn around and you'd, you'd increase the minimum wage to you know, $100, Chad, and, 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 uh, and, and that, would be, uh, that would be the solution. We know that's not the case. If you raise it too high, you'll, you'll destroy jobs. And so I wasn't there at the state legislature. I didn't have access to those economic reports. So I don't know what the right... I don't know what the right um, uh, level should be for the minimum wage, but I do believe we need one, and I believe it's an important safeguard, and that um, uh, it, it, it's something that is appropriately discussed at the state level. Uh, Grover Norquist, very powerful within the Republican Party. I don't know if you've signed his pledge, but philosophically, if you become the next senator, will you say, I'm not signing off on any tax increase whatsoever well I, i'll tell you what i'll do as your as your next u.s senator i will work my tail off to dramatically revise the tax code chad it is it's crazy i mean we're on we're april 16th so you just you filed your taxes yesterday i filed my taxes yesterday we have we have a tax code that no one understands chad do you do, you do your own taxes no you know i don't either and, and nine out of ten americans don't do their own taxes. And I think that's wrong. But, you know, the last time the tax code was dramatically revised was 1986 when President Ronald Reagan was president. And since that time, there's been 15,000 addition amendments, loopholes put into the tax code such that, you know, it wouldn't fit into the office I'm sitting in right now. Nobody understands it. It's way too complicated. It's way too complex. It's lost its integrity. And I think what we need to do. I mean, we need to sit down with a blank sheet of paper, and this is Republicans and Democrats. This isn't a partisan issue. This is an American issue. We need to sit down and 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 greatly simplify the tax code and make it transparent. And one thing I can tell you is, we in in, in sitting in down and having that 
conversation. What I would uh, insist upon is that it be revenue neutral. I mean, we need to continue to have revenues coming into the U.S. government because we got to pay down $17 trillion of debt. I, I think that's also all fair, and, and our tax code needs to be changed. But I, I think in this one, people do want a specific answer because you do have some Republicans who say, I'm not raising taxes, and others will say, if need be, and we see enough slowing down of the growth of government, I will do it. So, Well, well so let me be very, very clear. Yeah. I, I, I believe strongly, I mean very, very strongly, that Minnesotans already pay too much in taxes and that hardworking Minnesotans shouldn't pay another dime in tax. So I don't support tax increases. I do support a dramatic overhaul of the tax code to make it much more simple and much more transparent. What should we do with the 12 to 13 million illegal immigrants already in the country? We have a we have an immigration issue in our uh, uh, in our country, and we need to solve it. And I think it's a classic example of what's wrong with Washington. For 15 years, they've kicked this can down the road, and I have a tremendous amount of friends in the minority community, and and uh, and as an Irish American uh, whose families immigrated, I, I, I feel. A great, great um, uh, nexus and relationship with, with immigrants. And I believe that we have to fix it. I think any solution, Chad, has to start with securing the borders. Uh, so that's one. But then I would advocate a series of hurdles that, that one uh, would have to go through, uh, such as paying back taxes or fines subjecting themselves to a background check, uh, proving uh, 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 employment, and, and then be allowed to go into the immigration line. And, and I want to see this solved. We but have to solve it. Should they be sent home? Should, do, do they have to go to the back of the line if they've been here for 10, 20, 30 years and integrated with the family and within the community? Well, I think, I think everybody has said that they have to get into uh, the, the, the same line that, that people that have come into the country legally, Chad, to, to get citizenship. So I don't think there's anyone advocating that they go to the front of the line. What happens is, no, I don't, uh, I, I don't believe in, in, uh, in, in, in um, uh, well, let me step back. I believe in a solution to the immigration problem. What we have, if we don't do anything, we have de facto am amnesty. And, and that's, that's not a solution. That's a continuing issue. What I'm frustrated with is that we haven't solved it, and we continue to kick the can down the road. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you coming on the air. All right, Chad. Thank you.